Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.6 and Polychop Simulation's OH58D Kiowa Warrior Module. Welcome to Tutorial 4, Guided Missiles. Uh, the Kiowa is capable of carrying both the AGM-114K laser-guided variant of the Hellfire missile, and it's also capable of carrying the APKWS High Explosive variant, uh, which is a, a special version of the standard rockets, which has a laser seeker. Uh, now, the APKWS, um, you really only want to fire that in uh, a lock-on before launch mode, although I guess lock-on after launch would be possible. Uh, but you don't get any symbology to help you with that. However, the Hellfire has a variety of modes in which it can be employed, both lock-on before launch, which is the preferred, but there are a series of different lock-on after launch modes as well, and we'll go through those today. So let's uh, jump inside the helicopter and we'll do a little bit of initial setup. Uh, if we're going to be making use of the weapons, we're going to need to make sure that our master arm switch is in standby, at least initially. Uh, we'll also pop the laser into armed for just now, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, MMS into forward mode there. Uh, and actually, let's jump into the CPG seat, bring up the MMS system, and make sure it is locked forwards, which it certainly does appear to be. So that's all ready to go. Uh, I'll also flip the MMS into code A, which is what we're going to use with these weapons today. Great, okay, so with that done, I'm going to make my way over to the range. Uh, we're going, well, it's not really a range, it's some vehicles on sand, uh, and I'll show you how to employ these weapons. Be right back. Okay, you rejoin me, I'm in a stable hover now, and ready to engage a target. So we're first going to demonstrate the use of the Hellfires in lock-on before launch mode. This is where we already have a target in the MMS and we fire the laser. Uh, I guess this could also work for buddy lasing as well, uh, but we, we won't cover that today. Uh, the procedure would basically be the same. So laser is armed, uh, I'm using code A, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop the MMS into manual. And we'll pan down here. Oops, oh, that's not what I want. Uh, there we go, there's my target. Let's go ahead and get the target in the crosshairs. I'm going to do a point track on that. I'm then also going to action for a, a target store. I'm going to fire the laser. This is actually not necessary, but I just I want to store this as well. Storing 98 Tango, done. Okay, so we're uh, crosshairs on and ready to go on the CPG side. The last thing the CPG would have to do is fire the laser. But I'm going to demonstrate that just after we get the pilot set up. So uh, the pilot's going to action uh, to the weapon select to the right, because uh, Hellfires are on the right, and then we get a bunch of information here up. Uh, on the display. Uh, this dotted box is the uh, the launch envelope, so we want to make sure that whatever given target we have is inside this. While it's dotted, we're not ready to fire, we're not in constraints. This diamond is the current location of the MMS. This is where our target is in effect in this mode. And then down the left hand side, we have a variety of modes. So we have constraints, normal or override. Uh, we usually want to have this in normal and what it means is the system will not allow us to fire the missile unless it is within constraints. So it's uh, you know within the correct range and speed parameters and it already has uh, the laser track. You then have the launch mode, which is currently standby. And you can see for the right hand side here, we're showing two Hellfires, but they're, they've got no information on them. They're not powered. We're going to want to move from standby into one of the actual normal launch modes. If we go into manual, you'll see that we have two, two Hellfires here, and they're set up currently to use code A and then code B. And you saw after a short delay, the missile showed ready. Now that it's been powered and it's, uh, you know, uh, up and running normally. I could press the missile step button and it would actually move me to the other one and you can now see it's selected and after a short delay it should indicate that it's ready. Uh, there we go, ready. And you can see that both of them are showing code A now. They will always load whatever code has been set in the MMS you see. So in manual mode I can select which missile I want to fire. If I move it to normal mode, normal mode will, will generally uh, mean that it'll fire one missile than the other. Uh, and you, again, you can see it's showing ready, and in fact, both missiles are now showing ready. You also have an option for ripple, and ripple is for quickly firing off more than one missile. 
Uh, so I, I guess in that mode you could hold the trigger down. By the way, launching Hellfire, you have to hold the weapon trigger to the second stage uh, for a, a period of time. And in the delivery mode, we've got lock-on before launch, which is what we're going to do today. Well, first. Uh, and then you have three modes of lock-on after launch. You can have direct mode, where the missile will fly direct to the target. Low, which is a low pop-up. And high, which is a high pop-up. We'll demonstrate those second. And you'll see that the engagement envelope is different for those. Anyway, we're going to do lock-on before launch. Uh, we're going to make sure that the master arm switch is in armed. You can now see it says here on the screen, Hellfire, armed, A and B codes. Both missiles are showing as ready for ripple. I'm actually going to put it into normal uh, for this one. So the system will automatically cycle between the different missiles. I'm going to wait for ready. We have ready. Uh, both missiles, in fact, are ready. I'm going to jump to the CPG. Pull the laser trigger. You'll see laser is firing. I'm going to return to the pilot side. And with the, with the laser firing and us being within parameters, you'll see that the, the, the box turns solid. And also, left Hellfire is indicating track, which means it can see the laser and it is ready to fire. So, let's pull the trigger to the second detent and hold. Missile is away, I've released now. And if I jump back to the CPG side, laser is still firing. After something of a delay, we should see a boom. There's a boom. Uh, and in the lock-on before launch modes, the missile will automatically do uh, direct or low or high uh, based on range and other information. So you'll see that it did come in from above there at that range. That's us at about three kilometers. So that was nice and easy. That was uh, an engagement using lock-on before launch. We'll move on to the lock-on after launch modes in just a moment. Okay, so I've reset ourselves and we're uh, now going to demonstrate lock-on after launch. Now this mode is, is very useful if you need to remain masked, uh, either behind terrain or something else, while launching the missile, because you don't need to have a line of sight to the target when launching in this mode. You could have a buddy lays uh, from another aircraft, uh, you know, perhaps an aircraft further back and higher up, who has a, a good angle on the target without exposing themselves, and you as the launch aircraft could be a little bit closer. However, uh, the system still needs to know uh, where your target is approximately. It needs a reference in order to launch in this mode. There are two different ways that we can generate that reference, either with the direct to functionality of the helicopter's navigational system or using pre-points in the MMS. I'll first demonstrate using the direct to method. So if I press aft on the, the pilot's uh, uh, control switch, we get the HSD. Alternatively, I could just click HSD on the display and you'll see that we have the direct to or direct point functionality up here on the left. I'm going to choose direct point and enter 9, 8, Tango and press enter because that's the, the target we stored earlier. If I press store now, you'll see that the system is generating navigation information to that point. If I pressed uh, display select switch to the left, I get my VSD back again and confirmed on the left here, direct point 3.4 kilometers. So that's working as intended. I'm now going to push uh, weapon select to the right to select my hellfires and uh, quickly get set up again. We're going to go launch into normal again. You can see both missiles are selected. After a short delay, uh, we should have this missile ready. There we go. And instead of lock on before launch, we're now going to cycle to direct. Now you'll see that we have this little box that says deer. That is the direct to point. Uh, so we need to make sure that we put the direct to point inside our constraints box. Once we do that, it will become solid and we're ready to fire. Note that there are three lock-on after launch modes. You can have direct, where the missile will take a direct path straight to the target following the laser. You can have a low pop-up, where the missile will pop up and then come down and try to acquire the laser. Or you can have a higher one, and um, the high one will pop up even higher uh, to give you maximum range. However, we're getting a warning right now. Uh, Hellfire, minimum range 120. So it's basically telling us that the high pop-up will not work. Uh, we're too close because um, it will it will pop up too high and then when it comes down the target will already be out of its field of view. So in this case let's do a, a low pop up and it's not generating a warning for that. So uh, in this mode once we have it all set we've got constraints normal, launch normal, delivery low and A, sorry well the left hand of the two hellfires is selected and it's going to use code A. 
that's us basically ready to go. So uh, I'm going to pull the trigger to the second detent and I'm going to quickly jump to the CPG seat and actually fire the laser. Uh, like I said before, this could be our laser, it could be somebody else's laser. So pulling the trigger now, missiles away, CPG seat, firing the laser. And after a short delay, the missile should pick up that laser and strike the target. Bang! Worked perfectly. Laser off. That all worked very, very nicely indeed. Okay. So that was good. That was good. That was one missile in lock-on after launch. Let's jump back to uh, the pilot's seat. Uh, now you'll see that... Uh, I don't know why it does this, but uh, in normal mode the next missile is, is set to B. We don't actually want that. Uh, we can actually just cycle all the way back to manual or normal, and then you'll see that it goes back to code A and we have the direct point again. However, we're now going to clear the direct point, because we're not going to use that. If we press the, the display select aft, uh, or we press HSD, we can say return route, uh, and it's, it's now complaining about the range again. That's okay, I'm going to clear that for now. If we go back to the VSD, and then cycle weapon select to the right again, you'll see that we still have this alert. If I recall it, it's complaining about the range. That's because as of right now, it's using the FOB. Uh, so that's that's not going to work, of course. Uh, so anyway, we're going to leave it constraints normal, launch normal, and delivery low, but we're now going to create a pre-point using the MMS. So if I go ahead and slew down to this next target, I want to engage this chappy. So I'm just going to get a quick laser off of that. I'm going to do a uh, target location. Just going to store that target. Fire the laser until it says store. Got it. We're going to store 97 Tango. That's done. We're now going to put the MMS into... Mm, it's still complaining. I'm going to put the MMS into pre-point mode. It's already filled in 97 Tango, uh, and so that's working nicely. I could now just hit slave, and we're in pre-point mode. It's pointing straight at this target, ready to go. So with that done, I can now jump to the pilot's side, and you'll note that this time we get a box with a cross. Now, this indicates the reference that it's using from the MMS pre-point. Uh, so that's us. We're basically ready to go at this stage. It's that simple. Uh, whatever point you have in loaded as the current pre-point in the MMS will give us a cross on the pilot's display. So once again, I'm going to pull trigger to the second detent. Missiles away. I'm over at the CPG, firing the laser. And after a short delay, this should impact this chosen target. Bang. Target is obliterated, laser is off. So that was both lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch modes for the Hellfire. Let's get reset, and then I'll demonstrate how to do this with the APKWS. Okay, and finally I'm going to demonstrate the same with the APKWS. Uh, now, th th these can be fired in lock-on before launch or lock-on after launch modes, to be honest, uh, but in, in most cases you're just going to want to fire the laser and, and uh, do it before launch. Uh, so what I'm going to do is on the CPG side I've selected a new target, uh, I'm going to fire my laser and then I'm going to switch to back to the pilot side, uh, that means the laser will continue to fire at that target. Uh, with the VSD up, I can now weapon select to the left, that's where my APKWS is, and you'll see that we have some information showing up here. Uh, we've got mode, we can do single or ripple, just leave it in single. Uh, the fusing and queuing doesn't actually do anything at the current stage. The zone, if you had a mixture of guided and unguided in the same pod, you could actually flip between zones A and B and all. I demonstrated this in the guns and rockets video, uh, but we're just going to leave it in all. I've got a full APKWS pod there on the left. And in here you see rockets armed. They're ready to fire. At this stage, uh, we have the reference symbol here. It shows us where the MMS is looking, and we have offset indicators in the event that we were slipping uh, or it's like a long-range shot. Um, to get the maximum range out of the APK. APKWS, uh, you sometimes do need to loft a little bit, sometimes as much as kind of 10, 15 degrees nose up. And I guess these indicators are to help you with that. So I'm now going to go ahead and take manual control and try and get this nicely lined up, and then we will make the shot. Okay, Oop. you have the controls. Okay, <laughs> it's sometimes hard doing that passive controls back and forth. Anyway, I've got it roughly in the right place. We're going to pull. Oops. That's one rocket away, and let's observe the target. Oh, it's completely off. I actually, I didn't realize that I wasn't doing tracking. Yeah, there you go. That's unfortunate. We're going to do a point track on this guy now, and return to the pilot. 
and of course I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing in the meantime. There, that's us, we're back on target. Pulling the trigger to the second detent, that rocket is away. Back to the CPG seat. It has once again gone off. Let's move it back on. <laughs> this is really hard. Okay, point track, let's try it again. Rocket's away. Can we actually hit it this time? This, of course, would be easier with two people. There we go. Target destroyed. So that is really that simple. The APKWS does not enforce any constraints. You can launch the rockets at any range and any angle and do whatever you like. Although, of course, if you're not referencing the symbols here, you're not going to get a hit. Uh, and like I said, if we were going to try and engage at like four or five kilometers, we'd want to do a big nose up before we then fired the rocket. However, not too much. Uh, I wouldn't do much more than about 15 or maybe even 20 degrees could be a limit. Uh, otherwise, the, the rocket will not get a field of view on the laser spot. And that's it. I hope you've all enjoyed that. That is a demonstration of Hellfires in lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch and the APKWS. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to further support me and the channel, you have the option of joining Deep Hack's Ground Crew. For a small monthly fee, not much more than a cup of coffee, you can help me in creating this content. I really appreciate those of you who've already done so. There's a, a few small benefits if you do so. You get to join the Deep Hacks Ground Crew Discord server, where we can all hang out and chat, uh, and also I occasionally do flights together. Uh, I've also started uploading some of the mission files as well. Uh, and of course, apart from that, you just know that you're helping me out. Uh, but otherwise, everybody should subscribe, like, and comment. And thank you all so very much for watching. See you next time. Bye.